different type of pregame activity here at Stanford Stadium this evening. The Stanford Cardinal uh, is coming onto the field right now. The Arizona State football team right behind them, as you see, and uh, lined up in the center of the field is the Stanford University band. Normally, in college football games, the two teams do not come out of the locker rooms until after the national anthem has been played. Tyrone Willingham, the head coach at Stanford, called Dirk Cutter this week and asked him if he would take part in a pregame ceremony. It was very important to Tyrone that they do this, and Cutter agreed. And so both of these teams are going to be along the sidelines while the Stanford University band plays the national anthem, which will be preceded by a moment of silence. You just got to look at Ty Tyrone Willingham standing right on the 50-yard line along with his undefeated Stanford Cardinal. The Arizona State team lining up on the closest side of the field right in front of the color guard. There you see Dirk Cutter and Steve Frost is the public address announcer right now and we'll turn it over to him. In deference to those lost and those grieving after the tragic events of September 11th, we, the members of the Stanford Band, have decided not to perform a pregame field show today. Instead, we ask you to join us, the Stanford football team, and the Arizona State football team in a moment of silent reflection in memory of the victims and in honor of those who risked their lives to save others. Thank you. To celebrate the unwavering flame of the American spirit, please stand and lift your voices together with us as we perform our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. We'll be back to start the Pac-10 football season for Arizona State and Stanford after this timeout. Tyrone Willingham, 3-3 three three against Arizona State, coach of the year in the Pac-10 conference in 1995 and in 1999, took this team or a similar Stanford team to the Rose Bowl, and he has been in three bowl games in seven seasons at Stanford. Interesting as far as the a tenure of coaches at Stanford University. In two more years, he will be the tie for the longest amount of time 
at Stanford. Dirk Cutter, of course, three years at Boise State as the head coach. Two bowl games, uh, coach of the year in the Big West Conference, and 1-0 and as the head guy at Arizona State with a very resounding Stony Case opening win over San Diego State. Yep. State. Yeah, they really played well, and they just basically dominated every aspect of the ball. Very, very pleasant night in here in the Bay Area. 60% humidity, which won't be a factor, and 72 degrees will cool off some. A few clouds around. Arizona State winning the toss and deferring to the second half. You see Mike Barth, who will kick off to Stanford. Luke Powell, Brian Allen, and Ryan Wells are the deep men with Ryan Wells in the middle. The Cardinal opening two weeks ago here in Stanford with a win over Boston College. They were supposed to have played San Jose State last week. They will play them on December the 1st, while Arizona State will play at UCLA on December 1st to make up those postponed games. Allen at his goal line will bring it out. And he's got a crease up the middle and gets it back close to the 20. Randy Fasani, 16 touchdowns in his career, got four of those 16 in the opening game against Boston College. And you see some very impressive numbers right there. He's out of Granite Bay, a fifth-year senior, and he's a big, tough guy, 6'4", 230 pounds, just about like the guy next to me over here. <laughs> he's actually pretty mobile for his size as well. Stanford will run a lot of folks in there at the skill positions on offense. Arizona State will put eight guys up there in the box, and that's what happens when you do that and you don't block. Allen, the ball carrier. And we'll take a look at this offensive line for Stanford, which is very, very experienced. Anchored by Zach Quacha at center. And the backs and receivers, Allen gets the start, but there'll be at least two more running backs in there. Powell and Wells are among the best receivers in the Pac-10 conference. Second down and 11. Arizona State. Runs five defensive backs in the ball game most of the time, and this is how you beat that, right, Stoney? The quick drop, throw to the Teo Johnson, the big six-seven wide receiver, and he picks up about six yards on the play. Yeah, a lot of times what happens is when uh, eight guys get in the box, you got to throw out to the wide receivers. Arizona State with an experienced defensive line, and Terrell Suggs, the uh, one of the top players, Pac-10 freshman of the year. They run with the two linebackers. Unk and Solomon Bates. And then the question mark are those two corners, both freshmen. Emmanuel Franklin, though, last two weeks ago with a 100-yard interception return. Luke Powell is the man in motion. There you see the pressure, and Fasani is sacked. And Mason it is Unk. Mason Unk that brings him down for the sack. And for Mason Unk, that will be his first sack of the year. He basically came through untouched. Nobody there to pick him up. Fasani was just in trouble right there, dead in the water. Eric Johnson averages 37.2 yards per punt. Justin Taplin, the return man for Arizona State near midfield. Very nicely done. Taplin lets it roll, and it stays in bounds, and Arizona State will start inside its 35-yard line. Now you get to see a walk-on who had got, got himself a scholarship midway through the season last year. Jeff Cron with even more impressive numbers than Fasani had in his opening game a couple of weeks ago, a couple of touchdowns. Cron has thrown 16 in his career with nine interceptions. He had one five-touchdown game against the University of Oregon last year. The Sun Devils will show you a lot of different formations and a lot of different folks. Delvon Flowers, the running back, is actually a flanker out to the left and comes in motion toward the middle of the field. Cron off the play action. Looking for a lot, and he overthrows his intended receiver. That's Donnie O'Neill. Arizona State's offensive line, much like Stanford's, is very experienced. Regis Crawford is a sophomore. The rest are seniors. Levi Jones is an all Pac-10 candidate. Mike Williams did not get the start at running back, as you saw Delvon Flowers out there, but Williams will be in there along with Carney. O'Neill is their best receiver. 
Second and 10, Arizona State just inside its 35. Sun Devils in white, Stanford in the red tops. Sean McDonald is the man in motion. And that is Delvon Flowers, who missed all of last season with a knee injury on the first carry of the evening. Stanford with a number of lettermen, 16 lettermen back, and uh, that defensive line is experienced. They go with Coy Wire, who might be the best linebacker in the Pac-10 conference, at one time a running back and a good, solid secondary anchored by Tank Williams. Third down and seven. Scott Peters snaps the ball to Cron with pressure on Cron. He can't get the ball to Justin Taplin, Stoney. And we've seen a lot of pressure from both of these defenses. The quarterback's misfiring. Yeah, well, what, you know, you would think that the offensive line should be, uh, you know, a great benefit to ASU. I mean, they've got a lot of guys returning, but that time, obviously, they just didn't have much time to throw the ball. When you have to throw the ball quickly, you're just not as accurate. Matt Leonard on the pressure that time on Cron, the nose tackle. Luke Powell to receive the punt from Nick Murphy, who averages 38.3 yards per punt. His career average is 40. See if Stanford tries to block this and make something happen early on. They're sending him after him, and Murphy's there going to go. throw it, and here <laughs> comes the one of the gadget plays that Arizona State likes to run. That's Tom Pace to the 30, still going, and just ankle tackled. And the touchdown saver over there inside the 20-yard line. How about that for a gutsy move? Stanford, they got him coming after him, didn't he? <laughs> Let him come through and turns it into a screen pass. He's wide open. you got to love that. Tom Pace with his fourth reception. But we've got a penalty coming up against Arizona State. There's a flag back up at the 40-yard line. You know, it's pretty interesting that they try a fake you know, on the second game, especially after being off for two weeks. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. The yardage still results in a first down. Normally it takes a couple of games to get a tendency for what the, uh, you know, op opposing punt rush tries to do. See if we can see who it was that did the, uh, committed the infraction against Arizona State. We did get a chance to see who made the tackle and saved the touchdown. Evan Combs, a wide receiver, in on special teams for Stanford. Otherwise, Pace scores on that. With the penalty, the ball will be placed at the Stanford 49. Arizona State did get enough yardage for the first down, even with the penalty. So as they reset the chains now, the Sun Devils will go first and 10 at the Cardinal 49. Show a few of those trick plays early. <laughs> Let everybody get them on film and start thinking about them. First and 10. Stanford gang tackles. So far, not much has play. happened on the offensive line side of the ball. Mike Williams is hit by Pfeiffer and Coy Wire, and that's Williams' first carry of the ball game. He averaged just 1.8 yards per carry against the San Diego State Aztecs a couple of weeks ago, carried five times for nine yards, and he's listed as their starting running back. O'Neal to the left, McDonald to the right. And Cron looking this way for McDonald. And he's jammed up, and you talk about a little bump and run. Reuben Carter with him and bumping him all the way down the field. All the way down the field. As a quarterback, you want, to, want them to pull that flag out quick right there. Third down and eight. Cron had a little trouble in the San Diego State game, too, Stoney, with his long passes. The medium and short-range passes, he was right on the money, but he missed on several long-range passes against San Diego State. That was the one criticism that Dirk Cutter had of him in that ball game. Third down. Cron to run, and I think they'll give the sack to the Cardinals' Mac Leonard right there. He had pressure on Cron on the third down call a moment ago. And this time he nails him at the 49 for a one-yard loss and credit Matt Leonard with a sack. I saw them practicing this a lot this week, and uh, you know I really th the quarterback draw is a great play, especially on third down. But just uh, somebody snuffed it out right there. 
Well, let's see. Would you do it again here, or do you go ahead and kick the ball this time? <laughs> You've got to kick it. Luke Powell waiting for it inside his 10. Good snap. Powell with a fair catch at his 8-yard line. And we have 10 minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the first quarter in a scoreless ball game between Arizona State and Stanford. Welcome back. Stanford on offense for the second time. What was Dirk Cutter thinking about this team? Well, we'll find out in a couple of minutes about what type of offense he expects out of Stanford as they go to work now first and 10 on their 8-yard line. Even though they run the ball well, they're balanced. You know, they spread it out between those three backs. They have an excellent quarterback. They spread the ball around with their wide receivers. Uh, Bill Diedrich, the offensive coordinator, uh, does, a, does a real nice job in packaging his, his plays and always, uh, you know, gives the defense problems with motion and bunch sets. And uh, you, you, it keeps your defense on your toes. Luke Powell, the intended receiver on that pass from Randy Fasani, who Threw it down the near sideline, and R.J. Oliver there to break it up for Arizona State. That was the first test for the freshman. He passed. Stanford now with a second and ten at its own eight. Game has been played for the most part at their end of the field. Brian Allen out across the ten. And Solomon Bates, one of the stalwarts on defense at the linebacker position for Arizona State up to make the tackle. And it's third down and six. Well, do you expect them to run here deep in their own territory or with the penchant that they have for throwing it, will they air one out here? Or what do you expect? I might I might look for a screen pass or some kind of draw. It's third and six. They don't want to make a mistake deep in their own territory. And uh, they, they would really like to get a little better field, field position, just make a couple yards if they don't get the first down. Teo Johnson out here one-on-one -on, -one on our side of the field against Oliver right now. The big 6-7 receiver. Fasani flushed out of the pocket again and sacked for the second time. This time at the 10-yard line, Terrell Suggs records his first sack of the ball game, his third of the season, and it's 1-2-3 kick once again as you get a chance to see Suggs again here, Stoney. Yeah, he just he just overpowers the the left tackle. There's nothing to, nothing more you can say about that. He just overpowered him and got the sack. That's what's known as a bull rush, right? Exactly. Taplin back, awaiting the punt from Eric Johnson. Bad Devils might have gotten a hand on that one. It goes out of bounds near the 30-yard line, and Arizona State will get excellent field position on this one as they line it up out of bounds on the 31-yard line, and Arizona State just 31 yards away from the first score of the ball game. First and 10 at the 31. Cron to throw again on first down. Terrific catch at the 10-yard line. Turned in right there by Mike Pinkard, his second catch of the season, and he makes a big-time catch right there, and the Devils are 10 yards away. I tell you what, that was a great catch in traffic. He did a great job just looking the ball in, holding on to it. Just the basic seam right up the middle, right between the corner and the safety. No match for Tank Williams right there. Pinkert a big target at 6'5", 263 pounds. Tom Pace in at running back right now, and he gets the call. Nothing there. No gain, knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, on that last play, Cron did a great job of looking the safety off, keeping him in the middle, giving him a little extra room to, to throw to his tight end. Sun Devils make a couple of substitutions now. Taplin into the ball game, McDonald into the ball game. Also coming in is Ryan Denard. Also coming in is Skyler Fulton. So it's not going to be Smash Mouth here, I don't think, Stoney. They're bringing all the receivers in, spread the field out, see if they can throw it in there. Although they do leave Mike Carney, the fullback, and Pace, the running back, in there behind Jeff Cron. Who will throw? Looking to set the screen. Screen pass. Carney wow. at the five and fumbles it as he crosses the goal line. Oh. And it's a touchback, and the Stanford Cardinal will get the ball at their 20-yard line as Reuben Carter knocks it loose, and Carney fails to have possession of the ball as he crosses the goal line, and Stanford turns him away on the fumble. Right from the start, I think they, I think they dodged the bullet. Uh, 
they actually had a defensive lineman in position to intercept the ball, and Kron did a good job of putting it right over his head. If he fumbles that thing a half a second later, it's a touchdown. But you see it coming out right there just as he crosses the goal line. The ball goes out of bounds, and Stanford takes over. So Fasani now to try to take advantage of the Arizona State turnover. Luke Powell out of bounds close to the 25. Or rather, Kerry Carter out of bounds close to the 25. Carter gained 72 yards on 15 carries in the Cardinal opener against Boston College. Franklin on the stop for Arizona State. It's a gain of four. Both these teams just go three, four deep, bringing running backs at you. They'll wear you out. Running back by committee. Keep somebody fresh in there at all times. And I think, uh, you know, both teams, each running back has a little something different to offer. Casey Moore, the fullback, coming in from the sideline with the play right there, will line up as a wing back to the left side, the short side of the field, and that's Casey Moore in motion. Carter again, no gain. Sun Devils overpowering that Stanford offensive line there. That play never develops, and it's third down and six. Stanford's just trying to power it up uh, right up the middle to run a couple of counter plays. That time uh, they did a great job snuffing it out. Solomon Bates feel the hole. Linebackers laying back there waiting to see where it's going, and then uh, Bates is right there to make the play. Yeah, that play was a slow developing play, and uh, Bates just did a great job holding his ground, splitting the, the guy that's trying to block him and making the tackle. Cardinal 0 for 2 on third downs. That's Ryan Wells in motion. Warren Wells with the catch, and now they're one for three on third downs as Wells goes out of bounds in front of the Stanford bench around the 36-yard line. For Wells, his seventh catch of the season. That looked like a little bit of a pick play. I think Ricardo Stewart was uh, covering that time, and the wide receiver came in and knocked him off. This time the play will come in from the sideline as Pisani looks to... Uh, the offensive coordinator of Stanford. He'll send Carter in motion. Flushed out, reverses the field, got a man wide, wide open, open and oh. he drops it. That was Casey Moore who forgot to take the football with him. Second and 10. Caleb Bowman now, the wide receiver to the left. Fasani's two for four for 19 yards. Luke Powell fell down while he was in motion, and Fasani's in trouble again. And that one almost hit an offensive line. Stanford converting its first third down on this possession a moment or so ago. Fasani faces the third and ten. A little pressure again to the near side. And is the catch made right in front of the Arizona State bench? It is by Luke Powell, who goes up in front of Two defenders, 5'8", 170-pound Powell pulls it down. The Cardinal crosses the 50-yard line for the first time. Nice catch. It's a great touch by Fasani on this play. Put it right in between those guys. And that, there you go, talking about uh, those freshmen again. That was R.J. Oliver and Ricardo Stewart trying to come over and make the play. Just a little bit late. Tell you what, though, that's got to be thrown perfectly, and the receiver has to make a terrific catch on that as well. Casey Moore with his first carry of the ball game, 4-0. And Arizona State continues to stuff the run right here. The only way Stanford's moving the ball is by putting some air under it. Brett Pierce, the tight end, back in, and he will replace fullback Casey Moore. And they'll give Moore a yard at the 42 at second down and nine. Powell goes out to the right this time, and Wells comes to the left, and the Sun Devils will flip-flop their corners and put Oliver out to the left side this time. See if they come after Fasani on this passing down. Here they come. Powell is open. And he's out down on the five-yard line as he ran that post route right there and just out sprinted Oliver to the football. It's a pressure defense, feast or famine. When you bring everybody up the middle, there leaves nobody in the secondary, nobody in the middle of the field to stop that play. They just basically ran a post. The receiver outran. Who was that? Rat ran Oliver. That was Oliver, yeah. The, uh, once again, they put the pressure on the corners. 
Great throw, great catch. Oliver was able to catch up with him to stop the, to stop the touchdown, but nonetheless, uh, Raiders. First with the way Fasani's throwing it right now, Stoney. This just gives Stanford a little bit more room to let those receivers <laughs> move around down there. First and goal from the 10. A broken tackle inside the 10-yard line. Carter is out of bounds down around the original line of scrimmage. And for a second there, I thought he was going to go all the way. Yeah, it looked like it. Mason Young did a great job of uh, catching up to him, though. Carter, as I mentioned, 72 yards in the opening game against Boston College. He has scored 13 career touchdowns. There's a look at Mason Unk, who's also got some impressive statistics, including two and a half sacks in just two seasons at Arizona State. Second and goal from the six. Powell and Teo Johnson both out wide to the right. You got the big guy, you got the little guy, you got Wells over there as well. Fasani throws to the goal line. The catch is made, and Wells scores. Well, they overloaded him there. They had all three of those receivers on that side of the field, and Fasani just had to pick out the one that was open. Yeah, the, the corners really did a good job of uh, banging, banging the safeties, not let them get off the ball very well. They slipped out, <clears throat> slipped right out there in the flat. Emmanuel Franklin, the, the freshman, trying to catch up to him, just gave him too much cushion, couldn't get there in time. Mike Baselli, who has missed six extra point tries during his career, didn't miss that one. Stanford takes the 7-0 lead with 4 minutes and 14 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. For Wells, that is his third touchdown catch of the season and the fifth of his career. Here's another look at it, and you see Emmanuel Franklin just didn't get there. Just and then lost his time. footing. Lost his footing. Wells got in there. That's a 14-point swing right there when Arizona State gets that touchdown taken off the board and then Stanford goes down and, and scores with it. Tom Pace to the sideline. Still going. And out of bounds across the 30, out around the 33. Taplin will be the wide receiver to Kron's right. And he's going to throw on first down and goes left side. And out of bounds, Donnie O'Neill, his favorite target. Kansas product. He's six feet two. Nice big target. That's Del Delvon Flowers, and Tank Williams takes him out. But Arizona State doesn't run the ball probably as much as Stanford would like to run it. But when they do, they've been effective tonight. Flowers with a nice gain right there. Well, ASU's offense, as opposed to last year, where they were 40% run and 60% pass, are exactly opposite this year. They really like to come out throwing the ball. And it's more like 60% pass and 40% run. They like to spread the ball to a lot of different receivers as well. Flowers is a Los Angeles product. He's the single back now. Cron throws to the near side. Daryl Lightfoot, the freshman from Phoenix. And... Uh, Dirk Cutter said the question was only for a couple of days. Lightfoot showed up for practice, and he was ready to go at the, at the start of the season. Oh, nicely thrown. And the Sun Devils score. Justin Taplin runs under that one. And just like that, Arizona State's back within a point. Crom with a big smile as he heads to the sidelines. I tell you what, Fernandez just got turned completely around right there. He did. Extra point by Mike Barth is good, and Arizona State takes a minute, or almost a minute, to tie this one back up. Ryan Wells and Brian Allen. Allen will let it go into the end zone and out, and Stanford will start on the 20-yard line. It's only, only the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be here a while. These two guys get on it at all. That's Brian Allen. And uh, for once, Stanford gets a little positive yardage on a first down running play. You know, from a quarterback's point of view, Stoney, how important is that? I mean, we talk about this all the time on the on uh, radio broadcasts, especially uh, during the uh, Cardinals games, about how difficult it is for quarterbacks to operate when you're going second and eight and third and nine all the time. Second and five makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? It definitely does. Three wide outs to the right, two to the left of Fasani. 
Down the middle. First down yardage. That catch made by Teo Johnson. Johnson, who also plays on the basketball team at Stanford, where he averages about four and a half points a game. And you can see how he can also grab about two and a half rebounds a game as he pulls that one in. Hit him right in the chest that time. Good, good catch. First to 10, Cardinal at its own 48. The safety was a little out of position on that play. They just ran. Tail Johnson ran right, right in front of him. Good throw, good catch. Allen again. Running room. 40. 30. 20. Finally run out of bounds by Willie Daniel, who saves the touchdown. Really, that's the first good run that Stanford's had, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way their passing game's been, uh, been pretty effective, loosening up the defense a little bit, taking a lot of pressure off Asani right there with that, uh, that big run. Another look at it here, Stoney, and you talk about the run setting up the pass, but it's working just the opposite, as you just pointed out. Ricardo Stewart came up. He was the one that's supposed to fill the hole from the safety position, and he just missed the tackle right there. Split the backs. That's 41 yards now on four carries for Allen. Fasani off the right hash. There it is again. And this one is good for six. That's Jared Newberry, the backup fullback. Stanford's offensive line just dominated that drive right there. That's Jared Newberry's first carry of the season and the first touchdown of his career at Stanford. How about that? And nobody touched him. Wow, Fasani <laughs> almost dropped the snap. It almost didn't happen. Sometimes that throws everybody's timing off, doesn't <laughs> it? It does, it does. <laughs> I've seen some big plays happen from a, from a fumbled snap or fumbled, fumbled kickoff. 14-7 on the kick by Baselli as we get another look at Jared Newberry as he leaves the field and another look at him as he enters the end zone right here. Mason Unk was, uh, was blitzing right up the middle. Alfred Williams, the safety, was supposed to fill that hole. He didn't do it. The safeties are really struggling right now, filling the, filling the gaps where the linebackers are, are, are stunting out of those gaps. Brian Allen, who normally is carrying the ball in situations like that, and threw a nice block in there, too, to keep Solomon Bates off of uh, Jared Newberry. The Cardinal answers Arizona State's touchdown with an 80-yard four-play, one-minute and 20-second drive. And in the last two minutes of this ball game, we have seen three touchdowns scored. Mike Williams this time as Tom Pace stepped in front of him, and Williams returns the ball to the 22. Devils. Unusual uh, offensive look with a tight end in there this time, but Cron's going to throw. Carney at the 25 and pull down short of the 30 by Anthony Gabriel. Second and five. Cron with a long count right there. Had them all off balance, and uh, Delvon Flowers cannot spin back to the line of scrimmage. Matt Fredericks, the inside linebacker that time for the Cardinal making the tackle. Yeah, going back to uh, Mike Carney on that last play, a lot of people say he's one of the best fullbacks in the Pac-10, if not the best. He's got great hands out of the backfield. Good blocker. I'll tell you what, with these two linebackers, Fredericks and Wire, that Stanford has, they're going up against a couple of good ones on defense right now. All right, third down play for Arizona State. Pressure on Cron, but he's able to throw. And it's a little bit too tall for Taplin. You see a lot of people out there look a little bit out of position. Oh, bad snap. Murphy pulls it down and floats one. Powell, 45. Is he going to go all the way? Murphy's going to have to tackle him and does. Inside the 20. Luke Powell electrifies the crowd here at Stanford with the punt return. And with nine seconds to go in the first quarter, Stanford's in position to score again. Yeah, it's interesting you were just talking about the special teams and how much of an emphasis ASU puts on it. I think a, a, 
It all started off with a bad snap on that play. That was just a bad play all, all together. Then ASU just never did get into any kind of position to cover the punt. You know, ASU got uh, Tom Osborne from, from Oregon, who, you know, they take a lot of pride in their special teams, and Oregon had the best special teams in the Pac-10 last year. Stanford at the Arizona State 17, first and 10. Kerry Carter to the 10, to the 5. Is he face mask out of bounds? It certainly looked like it from here, but there's no penalty flag. Carter goes out of bounds at the 3 with two seconds left to play in the period. Willie Daniel with a one-handed tackle, and it appeared he got him up around the face mask, but apparently not. First and goal. All of a sudden, Stanford's offense has come to life. They sure have. They're doing a great job right now, mixing it up. Uh, they've been running the ball extremely well the last two drives. Get a little bit closer look here, and you can he see that it was not the, the face mask, but the shoulder. Carter hit the pylon, but he was already out of bounds. Carter is the tailback. Pitch it to him, and the rest is almost easy. He takes it in for the touchdown as the first quarter comes to an end. In four minutes and 14 seconds, Stanford has scored three touchdowns and Arizona State has scored one. It's a That's lot of the scoring. kind of offense <laughs> these two teams possess. There's the potential for it to swing the other way as well. So. Oh, absolutely. Arizona State's defense line has got to pick it up a little bit. They're just getting knocked off the ball. Oh, Maselli hits the upright. That could end up being a big Huge. missed extra point. Kerry Carter on the bench after his second touchdown of the season, his first of the game. This one on a quick pitch right. Arizona State with a missed tackle and another one at the goal line, and Carter's got it in there. Arizona State's got to start tackling the ball. Making, making those tackles. They've missed way too many. Both Two of the touchdowns that, uh, Stanford's, that Stanford's had have been from missed tackles around the goal line. Williams and Pace back deep for Arizona State as we start the second quarter. And this doesn't help Stanford either as they kick the kickoff out of bounds. And they give Arizona State an excellent opportunity here with good field position. Jess Father. Played collegiately at the University of Arizona. Williams cuts back to his left. Five yards, looking for a block. And close to 10 out to the 45. Tank Williams on the stop. Of course, he'll settle for none if the Sun Devils score more points than the Cardinal. Near sideline. Got O'Neal open. O'Neal takes a shot from Tank Williams. But he catches the ball, and the Sun Devils have another first down. That was a great throw. They, they just, he caught him in a cover two zone. Donnie O'Neill right down the sideline, right between the corner and the safety. Made a perfect throw. Little play action again. Boy, listen to these offensive numbers in the first quarter. 131 yards total offense for Arizona State. 176 for Stanford. Sometimes teams are happy to have that number, those numbers at the end of three quarters. No backfield this time behind Cron. Five wide receivers on a first and ten at the Cardinal 34. Cron's in trouble. And there was somebody in the general vicinity of that one, that being Mike Pinkard. And the pass is incomplete at second down and ten. Tom Pace replaces Mike Williams in the backfield. Cron's in trouble again and floats it to the near side. And the only person in the general vicinity that time that was an eligible receiver was wearing a red shirt. Sun Devils 0 for 3 on third downs. Pace the running back. Third and 10. Pace stopped short of the first down at the 30. Off the left side hash mark, so he's got to get it out to the right. It's long enough. And it's good. Now we got a track meet going on right here at Stanford after both teams were going one, two, three kick on their first couple of possessions. And Arizona State fumbled away a scoring opportunity. The last five possessions have resulted in scores. It's fun football to watch. Yeah, it is. And this is all 
All the scoring in this ballgame has taken place within a six-minute span. Yeah, both teams started off really sluggish, and, uh, you know, that could be from that two-week layoff. You know, guys coming out just trying to feel their way around. But, uh, yeah, the last, last few drives for both teams have been very productive. Dirk Cutter, of course, serves not only as the head coach but also the offensive coordinator of Arizona State. And all those guys on offense here in a little bit right now as Barth pooch kicks one to the 15-yard line. Brian Allen will get it back across the 30 and a good second effort out to about the 33 to give Fasani and company good field position now as Stanford goes back to work on offense. The last couple of times that Stanford's had the ball, they've held on to it for, oh, 12 seconds, 15 seconds, and then they've scored. <laughs> well, all that starts with great field position, and they've definitely had it, even on the kickoffs, and they're starting on the 33 right now. Allen, the running back. Johnson, the wide receiver, out to the right. And here comes Allen trying to get some yardage. And does. Powers across the 35 to the 36 for a gain of about three. Luke Powell is the wide receiver out to the left. This time they put the fullback back out there. Fasani looking down the middle. And now gets tackled as he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage by Tommy Townsend. Open this time. On, like on one of the plays that they scored on, Stanford puts all three receivers on one side of the field, but they bring Powell back in motion to the right. The pressure from the backside, the inside screen to Powell. Look at him go. First down yardage to the Arizona State 45. Eric Fields may have saved the touchdown right there. That was just a simple middle screen. They, they uh, caught ASU in a zone. Lyman went out and blocked Solomon Bates, uh, left, the, left the middle wide open. Emmanuel Franklin was actually the one covering the receiver, but he was playing a soft zone, couldn't, make, couldn't get there in time. Caleb Bowman back in the ball game. He is about the only player on the Stanford squad tonight that hasn't caught a ball yet. He's the wide receiver to the left. Sun Devils close to being offside. I don't see a flag. And Allen turns it into about a seven-yard gain right straight up the middle. 50 yards on six carries now for Allen. Second down and four at the Arizona State 39. Here they come again. Fasani's got some running room. He's got a first down and more and out of bounds inside the 25. And he got stoned over there when he got knocked out of bounds inside the 25 at the 23. But he bounces right back up. R.J. Oliver on the tackle. It's a nice play action fake. Arizona State just had great coverage right there. Fasani ran out of the pocket. Uh, like I said, he's a big boy, and uh, he's pretty agile. Yeah, give Mason Unk credit right there. I'll tell you what, he put that helmet right up underneath Fasani's chin and let him have it. 24-yard line is the line of scrimmage. It's a first down for Stanford. Allen again. Not much there, but he breaks a tackle, gets around the corner, and turns it into a nice gain. Second and five, Stanford at the Arizona State 17. There goes Newberry again, trying to get to the outside, but this time he's pulled down for no gain. Stanford trying to convert its fourth, third down here. They're three off of five on third downs on this third and four. Allen. Close to it, but I don't think he made it. He's knocked down on the 15, and he needed to get inside the 14. This will be a 32-yarder, and it'll come off the left side hash mark. Baselli has missed an extra point tonight. Got the distance. He got it. So Jeff Cron will be back on the field again for the Arizona State offense. As the Cardinal scores again, Baselli with a 32-yard field goal last week, Stoney, and uh, then apologized to him because the player didn't deserve it. And he said he hardly ever apologizes. If he chews you out, you deserved it. <laughs> Here comes Tom Pace on the kickoff, back up across the 25 to the 28. Flowers in motion. Cron looking deep. O'Neal got it inside the 30. Yards. 
That time Stanford had no free safety to help. Carter was just out on that island, island himself and uh, couldn't get the job done. Mike Williams finds very little running room. Got his scholarship midway through his freshman year last year. Looks to the left. Oh. Taplin dropped it. Nobody around him either. Sun Devils still looking for their first third down conversion. Here goes Cron. He's got it. And more Ooh. to the 15. Flag back out around the 29-yard line, though. Now it's third and a mile. And Cron's got to throw one. Maybe. Incomplete. Murphy to punt. Powell is back deep. Another high snap to Murphy. And that one could make the end zone on the fly and does. And Stanford starts on the 20-yard line. The last time Tyrone had a team with this many lettermen returning off of a team that had a subpar year the year before, they won the Pac-10 Conference and went to the Rose Bowl. And a lot of people are thinking that uh, he's showing the kind of confidence in this team this year that he may have, he may have the guns all loaded again. They got a lot of talent coming back, and they've got their, their top six offensive linemen returning, which is always a help. And, and you got a veteran quarterback back there. So you're not really too worried about the protections. Carter in motion. Carter the catch. And a first down at the 30. First and 10. Here comes the blitz from the backside. And Fasani steps away from it. Penalty flag down. Fasani's going to get sacked at the 29. Alfred Williams and Solomon Bates are both there. There's a flag back on the 20. Cardinal first and 20 at their 20. This is Luke Powell trying to get out here one-on-one -on -one and takes a shot in the helmet as he advances the ball to the 32 for a 12-yard gain. Shivers and Holloway on the tackle for Arizona State, and that's how you get the penalty yardage and more back as Stanford now faces a second and eight. That was just a quick little screen pass out there. R.J. Oliver on the, on the coverage comes out, doesn't plant his feet, slips, doesn't make the tackle, gets a couple extra yards. Teo Johnson is the tall wide receiver to the right of Fasani. Powell and Wells, the two shorter guys, out to the left. And Fasani gives it on the draw play. And about three yards right there for Kerry Carter. And Stanford now faces a third and five at its own 35. And this could be a big play right here with just under six minutes to go in the half. Stanford would obviously like to chew up some more time and score some more points here and keep the ball out of Arizona State's hands. This is an important drive for ASU. They need to really stop Stanford. They can't let them score this. They can't let them score right now, and they really need to get the ball back and be able to go down and put some points on the board, get a little bit closer right before halftime. Fasani empties the backfield behind him. The Cardinal 50% on third down conversions tonight. A third and five at their own 35. Devils blitz from the right side. Fasani throws it. The pass is intercepted. This is Terrell Suggs, but they're ruling Fasani down as Suggs takes it into the end zone. Solomon Bates is asking for some help here from the officials, but the referee rules Fasani down at the 27, a sack. For Arizona State's Eric Fields, no interception and no touchdown for Terrell Suggs. Now Arizona State, they, they got caught off guard a little bit. They thought they had a touchdown, and all of a sudden, Stanford's ready to punt the ball. They don't have their punt team out there. Had to call a timeout. Well, the Sun Devils might still be steaming a little bit about that last call, but we get another look at it, and we'll see whether or not Fasani was actually down. As you see, Eric Fields coming from his right, and boom. That was bang, close. bang. That was close, yeah. I think the official probably made a good call just because uh, in the speed of the game, it, it, was, it was too close to, get, to get, give him the benefit of the doubt. Eric Fields, he came free that time. Nobody, yeah. nobody picked him up. Fasani should have seen that. Eric Johnson to punt. Taplin at his 30. Nice kick. 
And Stanford came real close to being in the halo. In fact, I think they were. Flags are down. Taplin's back out to the 36. As we were saying about Tom Osborne, in Oregon in six seasons, his special teams player scored 10 touchdowns and blocked 22 kicks. As you see, Jeff Cron once again avoiding the rush and then throws the ball over the head of the intended receiver. And a penalty flag comes out as Daryl Lightfoot tried to get up in the air over Reuben Carter. And the penalty flag is thrown at the 48. Pass interference against the Cardinal. And uh, that's under 15 yards, so it'll go to the spot of the foul. Let's see if there was. Pass interference on the defense. Automatic first down, spot of the foul. To what Jeff did a great job avoiding the sack there, buying some time, finding a receiver downfield. He had him one on one, Daryl Lightfoot. Well, he Pushing got a hand back. on him, but uh, yeah, pretty, cl pretty close. The problem, was he wasn't, line. the problem was he wasn't looking at the receivers. Justin Taplin. Justin Taplin makes the catch at the 45 in front of Tank Williams. Arizona State with 20 yards in penalties now. Stanford with 27. And up the middle goes Delvon Flowers for a couple, but short of the first uh, down yardage as he gets to the 43. Third and a yard. Sun Devils still looking to convert a third down, and Cron does, and he's off to the races inside the 35 and knocked down at the 29-yard line of Stanford by Reuben Carter, giving Arizona State a first down with 326. Sun Devils going with two tight ends. Stanford leaning into that neutral zone light right there. Cron going deep, and it's a little too tall for Frank Maddox. And even if you don't have a guy that's real fleet, a fleet of foot, and, and Cron doesn't look like he's any kind of a real sprinter, but it certainly can be effective when he's only got to go four or five yards. And there he just dumps one off. And they're allowed to do that now in college football, much like they can in the National Football League. Cron looks around, everybody's covered, so throw it on the ground and go back and run another play. Well, they were trying to run the, set up the screen pass again that time, and uh, just nobody was fooled. Running back couldn't get out, couldn't get free. Smart play by Jeff. Stanford with some nice pursuit right there and laying back, he's keeping the Tom Pace pretty well covered. That's the one we saw earlier where Pace got knocked down by one of his own men. Right, right. Third down and 10. Cron over the middle. Oh. Dropped again by Taplin. That's his second of the night. Barth was good. A few moments ago on a 47-yarder, this one is from 46. And the angle's a little bit better. This one is inside the left hash. Once again, got the leg, and it's good. Kind of walked over the sideline. Wells lets that one go into the end zone for the touchback. Stanford has had real good luck when they have started from their own 20. They've had two 80-yard drives in this ball game, And right now, with 2.48 to play and two timeouts remaining, they're right where they want to be with a 10-point lead. Fasani now 9 out of 12 for 147 yards and a touchdown as he brings the Cardinal to the line of scrimmage. Devils will blitz. Carry Carter for a couple to the 22. He probably just got a shot right on that hip. Fasani to the sideline for Wells, and if he stepped out of bounds across the 30, he got the first down. R.J. Oliver is over there defending. Stanford now with the first and 15, and it's 25. A penalty hurt this team on its last possession, forcing the punt. And now a first and 15. They had a first and 20 the last time they had the ball down here this deep. Arizona State showing the blitz again from the backside. Fasani running around. Now throws, Wells the catch at the 40, and if he can get going, there's a penalty flag back at the 26 that's thrown after the catch is made. Josh Amobi makes the play on Wells near midfield, but a penalty flag is down back at the 26. Stanford might have had an ineligible man downfield. They did. Earlier, of course, Greg Schindler, the right guard, out of the ball game because of an injury, although he is back out there now. That's Casey Moore, who doesn't carry the ball a lot. 
but blocks a lot for the Cardinal running game and kind of an interesting call in a first and 20 where you hand the ball to the fullback and he gets you two yards and gives you a second and 18. I think Brent Guy, the Arizona State defensive coordinator, is kind of thinking that same thing. Uh, they, that time they brought Willie Daniel as, from a safety blitz standpoint, hoping that they were going to catch him in a, in a pass, put a little pressure on Fasani. Second down, 17, three yards on the play for Moore. Play action, Fasani's going deep for Powell. And then Powell has to play defensive back and knock it away from Emmanuel Franklin, who was that close to his second interception of the season. Let's take, take a look at this one again. This is a great play by first Franklin and then by Powell to knock it away from him. Yeah, Fazzani just threw a, a jump ball. Sometimes you want to do that. You got a one-on-one -on, -one on the receiver, no free safety all over the top, and you just got to trust in your receiver. Emmanuel Franklin did a great job there. He's pretty frustrated and missed the interception, though. Ran one back against San Diego State for 100 yards in his first game as a collegian. Third down and 17. Offensive coordinator, coordinators just tell the quarterback, you call it. This is, <laughs> this is a tough decision right here. Screen pass. Yeah, but Fasani better get rid of it. And he does as he's put on his back in the end zone. It's a tough play because you don't want your quarterback to get hit. Pressure on Johnson, hits the floater. Taplin calls for the fair catch at the Stanford 39. Looks like they're walking off Dropping 15. Dropping the kicker on the defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Oh, boy. That is a big, big play right there. And you, if you're going to hit the kicker like that, you better hit the ball first. And Eric Fields to the sideline right now, and Stanford with the football at its own 21. And that's 35 yards now in penalties against Arizona State. Stanford with 54. Fasani from the gun. Inside screen to Luke Powell with some running room, trying to get to the far side of the field. 40, 50, 40. Out of bounds at the Arizona State 33-yard line, and this gets them close to Baselli range. And there are no flags. That's a, that was an important penalty right there. That, that's a big swing in the game. Just look at how Powell finds the spots to run in the field here. They ran that same play with success earlier in the game, just a little middle screen. Let Powell just outrun everybody. Once again, Arizona State missing some tackles. 32-yard line. Stanford still with two timeouts remaining. Five catches and 137 yards for Powell. He had two catches in the opening game. Wells is in motion. Fasani again with time to throw. Over the middle this time. To the 10. And into the end zone goes Nick Sebas, the wide receiver. And the Cardinals scores with 28 seconds to play. Two plays following that roughing the punter penalty. Now that is called taking advantage of your opportunities. That is. They're taking, two, taking advantage of two opportunities. That, that one and then the turnover in the end zone earlier by, by Tom Pace. Nick Sebas, a wide receiver from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania, has caught two passes this season, both of them touchdowns. Just got wide open, and then it's a foot race. Actually, and Randy, a nice little move there at the end. Randy Fasani actually threw that ball behind behind the receiver, and it uh, was to his advantage because he was able to, to stop on a dime. Emmanuel Franklin overplayed it, and it was a foot race in the end zone. 30-13 to 13 Stanford, and we're still in the second period here at Stanford Stadium. That touchdown coming with 28 seconds left to play. That is a 32-yard touchdown reception. Oliver got his feet out from under him once and then overran the play. Jeff well, Collins started to go to the, the locker room and then came back after that play. So I don't know if they're gonna, he's going to go back in the game or not right now. It's 28 seconds to go. It probably all depends on uh, what kind of kickoff return they get here. A lot of coaches play it safe right before halftime. 
I don't know if this this uh, this coaching staff's a play it safe kind of coaching staff though. They may they may try to do something. Well, I don't I don't think you tuck your tail right here, especially if you're as wide open in offense as Arizona State likes to be. Even though you're going to get the ball to start the second half, half a minute in this game is a long time. You're right. There was a shot of Jeff getting ready. He looks like he's going to go back in the game. The kickoff return will be out to around the 28 from Darrell Lightfoot. Delvon Flowers will be the running back, but you would expect Cron to put the ball up, and you see Stanford in the prevent. They've got four people rushing and everybody back. That ball is caught near midfield, and they can't get him down, Mike Pinkard, or rather Ryan Denard. And the officials finally rule the play dead at the 49-yard line and stop the clock with 12 seconds left to play in the half. 12 seconds left in the half. Cron first and 10 at the 49 of Stanford. Williams is the running back blocking for Cron, who just throws this one to the sideline and out of bounds and stops the clock with six seconds left to play in the half. And they just got him out there to throw the Hail Mary pass. Stanford's got about six guys back inside the 20-yard line, and Walter winds up and lets her go, and there's going to be a jump ball at the goal line and a spike as we talk about volleyball coming up at halftime. Knocked down by Tank Williams, and the first half is over, and Stanford's crowd is very appreciative of the Cardinal as they have scored 30 against Arizona State here in the first half. And they lead it at halftime, 30 to 13. Delvon Flowers and his teammates anxious to get the football back as we start the second half here at Stanford. The Cardinal on top, 30 to 13. And you can see they pretty much dominate things as far as the yardage is concerned. Look at the rushing yardage in the first half, 103 to 39. Stanford out in front. They have about a five-minute Advantage as far as the time of possession is concerned, Stony Case. And ASU with a one for seven and third down conversions, that doesn't help you at all when you're when you're in a game where you're making mistakes too. No, not at all. Uh, that, you know, that's probably one of the most important uh, stats on there, just the one for seven. I mean, you can't – and they've had quite a few third down situations. It's just haven't converted, whereas Stanford has. Usually you want to have at least 40 to 50% third down conversions, and uh, ASU is just not getting it done. Well, the Sun Devils will have the football to start the second half. They showed us a fake punt in the first half. We'll see what they've got up their sleeves here as they're going to get a short kickoff. Mike Williams will field it inside his 15, trying to find running room, and gets it across the 20. And that's where Jeff Cron and company will go at the 23. We didn't get any kind of an injury report at halftime on Jeff Cron, so we are assuming that whatever it was that was ailing him at the end of the first half, as you look at his numbers... He has not been intercepted. And 19 of 22, I'll tell you what, you don't get much better than that. That's not, that's not right. He's 11 of 23. 11 of 23, he started off 6 of 9, started off really well. Kind of slumped after that, but. Uh... Delvon Flowers, as ASU comes out and tries to run it at Stanford here in the second half, and Flowers gets a couple of yards out to the 25. And there you go. Now they uh, just, uh, I think they hit the, I, I do that all the time when I type. I hit the nine instead of the zero, and uh, <laughs> 195 yards is good. I'm sure Jeff wouldn't have complained with those numbers. Yeah. You know, I think ASU in the second half, they just got to keep doing what they're doing and just eliminate the mistakes. Wells and O'Neal are the two wide receivers. And Cron looks this way for O'Neal and finds him at the 30. He gives ground, however, and is thrown down back at the 28 and actually loses a couple of yards that he had caught the, when he caught the ball that he had by giving ground, and it puts Arizona State in a third down and long. Yeah, sometimes you just try to make a couple extra yards and you end up losing, the, losing too many. And wide receiver coaches preach and preach and preach about catching the ball, getting straight up field. That time uh, he didn't do a good job. Four catches for 80 yards now for O'Neal. And let's see whether or not Stanford sends more than four after Cron. They're going to rush four, throws it over the middle. O'Neal makes the catch. He gets thrown down immediately and short of the first down by Coy Wire. And Arizona State faces a fourth down as they again 
fourth and one, but they're, are they going to go for it here? Cron coming to the sideline looking at Coach Dirk Cutter, and Cutter at uh, gambling early here. Yeah, a a fourth and call. one, gutsy call here at the 32-yard line. Flowers is the running back. Fourth and a yard at the 32, early in the third period. Taplin is in motion. Cron on the option, pitches the ball back. Flowers with some running room, got the first down, and a couple of steps away from breaking that one out across the 40 to the 42 and a first down for Arizona State. Tank Williams makes the tackle. That was a great play by Jeff. That time uh, he only had one yard to go. He tried to cut out, thought he could get it. The defensive end came down on him, and really it was just an option right off of that defensive end. Guy wrapped him up. He wasn't going to get it. Made a very athletic play. Got the ball out to the... The running back for pick up five or six for a first down. How about the overhand toss there on the option pitch, too? Now he's going to come deep for Donnie O'Neill again. He's got it, and he's off to the races at the 10, at the 5, and he scores. Nice throw, nice play. I tell you what, ASU is doing a great job of when they recognize that it's man-to-man -man coverage, getting that safety to cover the inside slot receiver, running the post over the top, and throwing it up to him. You're working that play action really well. And O'Neill gets a couple of steps behind Fernandez, and that was all he needed. Barth with the extra point to put Arizona State back within 10 here in the opening two and a half minutes of the third quarter. And it's right down the middle. So as we have mentioned on several occasions, we have seen some barn burners and some track meets here at Stanford Stadium, and we've got another one tonight. And that's exactly what, uh, what ASU needed to do, come out strong in the second half, show, show Stanford that they're not going to just lay down and let them run all over them. College, sometimes it's, it's lopsided the other way, and you're still winning. So it's not, it's not the, the telltale sign in, in college football today. Wells up the sideline, 20, 30, 40, and out of bounds as they just continue to run up and down this field north and south. Alfred Williams makes the stop. O'Neill now with six catches, 142 yards, and a touchdown. And Cron with two touchdown passes tonight. And Stanford at its own 41 with a short field here, Stoney. They've had a short field a lot today, and they've, they've really taken advantage of some of the field position they've had. It makes it a lot easier when you're not. I mean, both teams have done a good job with field position, and nobody's really been backed up in their ter their own territory. And as a quarterback, you come out a lot more comfortable. You just uh, you don't worry about taking a sack in the end zone. And when you have good field position, you, it makes it a short field, and you don't. You know, there are a lot of things that you could do with the, as an offensive coordinator. Fasani to Powell, who's thrown out of bounds on the far side by Emmanuel Franklin. Fasani is 13 of 25 for 260 yards and a couple of touchdowns tonight as both of these quarterbacks are putting on a show. They've ran this a couple of times today, just a, a one-step quick throw it out there, let, let the receiver make something happen. Powell also over 100 yards in receptions tonight, six catches for 143. Fasani looking at Arizona State from the shotgun right now. And calling the play from five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Here comes the blitz. Fasani going deep and overthrows Teo Johnson, the intended receiver. That time, Third down. That time Fasani just recognized that ASU was about to bring a blitz, got, a, got a, a, into a protection that could pick up everybody. So you'll see nobody coming free. The running back uh, picks up the safety. There was a little pressure, but that was just because somebody in the offensive line missed a block. Tried to throw a little corner route. That's actually one of the, uh, an audible you'll see a lot of times in the NFL. It's called a scissors route. The outside guy runs a post. The inside guy runs a corner route. They try to rub each other off. Now they empty the backfield behind Fasani on this third down and five. Arizona State, here's the quick pitch to Johnson, and Johnson drops it again, and that's close to being a lateral pass, but the officials rule it. A forward pass, and Alfred Williams up to lay a lick on Teo Johnson after the ball goes by. And Arizona State, they struck early, and they're going to get a chance to strike again. Taplin will wait for Eric Johnson's punt. Johnson, 
Sun Devils have seen about 20 points turned around in this ball game by virtue of a fumble on an apparent touchdown and the ensuing seven points from Stanford on the following drive and then the roughing the punter call which resulted in another Stanford touchdown. Taplin from inside the 10 starts at his five running to his right and loses his footing and then has Fernandez run up his back and knock him down before he can get back to the 20. Here you see uh, R.J. Oliver covering Ryan Fernandez on the punt. And he does a good job staying in front of him until right there about the 25-yard line. But he keeps fighting. And as we get back to action, Frank Maddox gets sandwiched out around the 30-yard line by Simba Hodari and friends. Cron right on the numbers with that pass, but Maddox can't hold on, and it's second down and 10. I think if ASU has a weakness on offense, it's probably their tight end just because they lost the, the great one, Todd Heap, from a year ago. He was actually a junior. He, he could have helped this Sun Devil team a lot if he had stayed in school. Solomon Bates on the sideline right there, as you see. His defensive unit did, a, did the job getting the ball back for the offense. Second down and 10 from the 12. Delvon Flowers, nowhere to go. Matt Fredericks was right there. They were not crossed up by that counter play, or I heard Keith Jackson call it a cross buck today. I saw UCLA run that play two or three times today. And uh, that's an old term from football back when they <laughs> cross played buck. with leather helmets, <laughs> which I remember. And it's third down and nine. ASU not good on third downs tonight, one out of eight. Cron has gone all the way at quarterback, though shaken up briefly in the second period. Looks left a long time, now runs right and out of bounds, shy of the stick around the 20. And Coy Wire made him pay for that one. He did. He came up from the, from the linebacker position, just rocked Cron a little bit. That time they got they caught him in, in a good uh, a good coverage, actually, for Cron to run. It was... Uh, Cover two with a with a man man type concept as well, and Coy Wires was able to come up, and make the hit, and stop that first down. Yeah, and look at how far across the field he came. He came all the way from the right hash mark to run Cron down. Well, the riverboat gambler Dirk Cutter doesn't roll the dice on this one. Fourth down and three, and uh, Nick Murphy is going to punt. Luke Powell at the forty. About the only thing we haven't had tonight is somebody run one back for a touchdown. A lot of air under this one. And a fair catch. We won't have one run back here either. Stanford at its 42-yard line now with a 10-point lead. And a nice little run inside right there up the middle by Brian Allen. I tell you, this guy has shown us something in his ability to run inside and a powerful runner out of Ontario, 5'10", 200 pounds, and he can lower the blade a little bit. Low center of gravity, just keeps ch churning those legs, running right through it. Stanford has run 24 running plays and 20 passing plays up to that time. Now it's 25 and 20. Arizona State, 16 rushes and 28 pass plays. Second and five. This is Casey Moore, and he's got the first down to the 45-yard line. Lost his footing. He's also a load, 6'2", 240, and a senior. And I don't know whether you'd call it a low center of gravity or whether he's just a bulldozer. He'll knock you down. Arizona State continued to put the pressure on. They've, just, they've uh, blitzed. They blitzed the safety that last play. And the last two times they blitzed, they just caught Stanford in a run. And, uh, you know, they're hoping, hoping that they're going to throw the ball and get a sack on the quarterback. And it just uh, didn't work out that way for them. Jamie and McCallum is a wide receiver out to the left. Now, he's not even listed on the depth chart. The pass near side for Johnson, and he can't hold on. And I'll tell you, that's nice defense right there by R.J. Oliver. That was a great job. He, you know, his one-on-one -on -one coverage, just a basic go route. There's a penalty flag against Stanford back at the midfield stripe, and that's Luke Powell, not uh, Teo Johnson. But Oliver does a nice job there, doesn't he? Fighting for the football. It's a good job. He's pretty quick. He looked like he was just running easily with the with the receiver. The ball will be moved back 10 Holding yards. On the offense. 
10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. And, and just under 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Stanford with 64 yards in penalties tonight. Here comes Allen. There goes Allen. Inside the 40 with Willie Daniel riding him for about the last six yards. 15 yards on the carry for Allen, and they turn a first and long into a second and short. Nice blocking up front. Arizona State's Willie Daniel, the man who made the tackle, is the injured player. And Allen is close to the 100-yard mark and rushing now. Ten carries and 80 yards. And those big guys up front like Zach Quacha that you just saw bend over the football right there certainly help. Kerry Carter, the man in motion. Bassani throws. Carter the, had it and then gets hit and goes out of bounds. Ricardo Stewart. Not a smart play. Shoves him out of bounds and uh, flags fly. Fasani play action. Down the middle for the tight end. Touchdown, Stanford. Brett Pierce, his second catch, his first touchdown of the year and his career. And how, the last time Arizona State got a 15-yard penalty, it took Stanford two plays to score. This time it takes him one. I tell you what, penalties will really kill you. And this is, this is one of those plays that Ricardo Stewart in the last play has the penalty. They pull him out to yell at him. He's normally the free safety. All of a sudden, he's not in there. They, they run the tight end right up the middle where the free safety normally was. They play in a different coverage. Just man-to-man -man coverage, no free safety. Solomon Bates gets beat. Touchdown. Excellent point. You can't stop anybody when you're on the sideline getting your tail chewed by a coach. Vaselli's extra point is good. The Cardinal goes 58 yards in six plays in a minute and 52 seconds to go back on top by 16. And so far, that missed, missed extra point hasn't been a factor with just under nine minutes left to play here in the third quarter. And then a coach that's as offensive-minded as Tyrone Willingham is, it's just like on a turnover. Throw one in the end zone right away and make him pay for it quickly. And that's what they do. Plenty of time. They can be patient. But this is an important drive for them right here. Here comes Tom Pace, who fields it at the 10. And stays on his feet and drags folks with him out to about the 33. First and 10, Arizona State. That's Delbon Flowers in motion. One of these days, they're going to hand it to him when he goes by like that. This time, they throw it to him. And he's knocked down after a gain of four out to the 37. Nice open field tackle right there by Gary Cobb. It was. That was a good uh, – they, they ran that play action a couple of times tonight. Just – fake like they're going to hand off to the receiver, and they're trying to get single coverage on the outside and get a wide receiver open. Just couldn't do it that time, so he had to dump it to his running back. Usually you have a progression. You throw it, you're looking downfield for your, your top two receivers, and if uh, they're covered, you throw it off uh, to your swing, swing route, out to your, your dump off. Pace is the running back. This time they do hand it off. That's Daryl Lightfoot, who cuts it back into the middle, crosses the 40, and gets to the 41. So we call that play one play too soon. The play before they faked that, yeah. this time they came back and handed it off. And he does a nice job of going back and cutting back to an open spot of the field because Stanford had that one stopped for no gain. And Lightfoot puts Arizona State down in a third down and short, where they again are one out of nine on third down conversion attempts tonight. Pace and Carney are the running backs behind Cron. Will he run the option here? Nope, he's going to give it to Pace. And Pace breaks a tackle and gets close to the first down. But from where they spot it here on the, on the side of the field that we're on, it looks like he's about a half yard short. And Arizona State faces another fourth down call here. Here's Pace. Look at this effort. He almost gets it. He almost did. Uh... Looked like the tight end just needed to hold his block a little bit longer, and he would have gotten it. It was a great second effort, though. Sun going for it. are two for two in fourth downs. Pace stopped, and he got the first down. He got the ball across the 43. Coy Wire makes the tackle, 
And from my vantage point, I think he got it. War Wire takes the football away from him, but the officials rule pace down. Going to be short. My goodness. I don't think they got a good spot. I, I don't either. I have to see the replay, but it looked like he, he got across that line. Of course, if his knee hits the ground before he stretches the ball out, then it's all for naught. But let's take another look right here. It looked to me like he got the ball across the 40 before the knee went down. Uh, he might have fumbled the before, the, before the knee went down. Yeah. So Stanford now with an opportunity to blow this thing open. And Fasani is going to throw a screen. And this is Matt Wright. And Wright will take it out of bounds in front of the Arizona State bench at the 34. Jason Shivers, the free safety, to make the tackle. That was actually just a little bootleg. The tight end blocks down on his defensive end and then releases him. Sonny, all he has to do is get the ball high enough over the defensive end. Good touch on that, on that pass. I think that's been probably one of the knocks against Fasani is just his accuracy. Well, he's okay tonight. Look at those numbers. For his career, he's only around 50%, which in college, you'd like to be up around 60. Devils are going to blitz. Here goes Carter, foot race to the corner, 25, 20, and first down yardage at the 18. Oliver finally grabs a hold of him and hangs on with help from Michael Holloway. Just about the time Arizona State comes after the quarterback thinking he's going to pass, Stanford crosses him up and runs it, and runs it well. Just bottled everybody up in the middle. I think that was Suggs that came down, sucked down a little bit too far, let the running back bounce around him. Shivers wasn't able to pull him down for about a five-yard ride there either. So Carter will remain in the ball game at running back. Moore will now line up as the single setback at the 18, first and 10. They're going to the big guys again. Once again, this is Matt Wright, wrestles for yardage inside the 10. Stanford's doing a great job of just mixing up the short passes, taking a shot every once in a while, having some good runs, really throwing ASU off balance on defense. Well, not only that, but when you're getting those, those little cornerbacks out there and those safeties having to wrestle those tight ends, you can sure wear them out quickly, too. It's without a doubt. That's just, you know, a quick, quick drop. Throw it to your tight end that's posting up right there. It's just in, the, in this kind of offense, that's almost like a, a five-yard run. It's kind of what the offensive coordinator considers it. Second and a yard. Here goes Allen. Loses his footing, but I think he got the first down. They want to stay in this game. Three wide receivers to the right. Allen is the running back. Johnson is the big target in the middle of the two little guys, and Allen's going to go right up the middle. And whoever it was that had trouble keeping his helmet on may have lost it, and it is Bates. His hat comes off as penalty flags fly. And uh, Solomon Bates is probably going to need to come out of the ball game here for an equipment check because he's had a little trouble keeping that hat on his head. But let's find out what the flags are about. Stanford's backing up. It could have been a face mask for the reason that Holding helmet's on the ground. On the offense. 50 yard penalty, previous spot, still first down. Well, Bates just got hit right in the jaw by the tight end on a good block there. Brett Pierce just put his hat right up underneath Solomon Bates' face mask and knocked that thing right off his head. This is Wells in motion. Here comes the blitz. Here comes Fasani rolling that way. Going deep. Powell's too deep. The ball's out of the end zone. Incom Two wides to the right of Fasani, one to the left. Carter is the running back. Fasani rolling right, directing traffic, now running and knocked down as he gets to the 13-yard line. And they've still got to go 13 yards now to get a first down, and they can't get a first down before they score because it is a third down and goal to go. Well, they line up two wide receivers on the short side, then they send Powell in motion back to the left. They come to the short side for Johnson. Hey, Jump ball in the end zone. Touchdown, Stanford. <laughs> huh. you, you didn't let me finish, except if you have except, a 6'7 yeah. wide receiver that can go up and catch the ball. Teo Johnson's second touchdown of the season. And that one hurts. Arizona State's in big trouble now. That's just a complete mismatch. 
you've got a wide receiver that plays basketball, they can leap out of the gym against a, against a small cornerback. And Michael Holloway didn't look like he was six feet tall on that one, did he? No. Regardless, that's six or seven inches, and it's man-to-man -man coverage right there. Baselli's extra point, and it's a 44-20 to 20 Stanford lead. And I'll tell you what, the way this Cardinal team is putting points on the board, they may be the sleeper in the Pac-10. I think they're a good football team. They're very solid. Got a lot of experience, a lot of guys coming back. It really helps you. It's a five-step drop, throw it up for grabs. Have a lot of confidence in that big receiver. As a quarterback, you love plays like that. You don't have to think too much. You just have to drop back. As long as you get the coverage that you want, just throw it up there. Tom Pace fields the kick at the 6, at the 20, and struggles forward to the 28. Stopped by Wire and Branch. Sean McDonald is the man in motion. Arizona State's going to run this one. And that is Mike Williams up the middle. <laughs> Your team's going to do well. Well, Arizona State turned the ball over early in the ball game, and with as many passes have been flying around here tonight, it has been a relatively a turnover-free game. Three wides to the right side of Cron, going deep. McDonald right. at the 30, at the 20. He's going. He scores. This will be a 16 or 18-point deficit. Carney, the running back. Cron throws to the goal line, and it's good for two. As the catch. So they got a chance to win with, with three scores, two touchdowns and a field goal. How about that? Ryan Denard makes the catch, and uh, ASU's right back in it again. 2.57 left to play. Denard just goes down and camps on the goal line here. Just posting up. All you got to do is catch it. There's one you don't have to run after you catch. Barth kicks. Allen at the two. Allen at the 20, at the 30, at the 40, at the 50, and I'm getting tired again, but Allen's not. He's out of bounds at the Arizona State 39-yard line. And the Arizona State offense is saying, hey, guys, we were only out there for two plays. Let's make sure that Stanford doesn't get us back out there two plays later. Look at this run. Nobody's tackling. Nobody's getting close enough to him That's to tackle true. right there. That's true. Wow, what That's a run. I'll tell you what, Arizona State's going to go back this week, and they're going to evaluate their special teams. They, they take a lot of pride in their special teams, and they're just not getting it done today. Chris Lewis is the new quarterback for Stanford. Kerry Carter. Runs head on into Solomon Bates and others after a gain of about two. It's a good day. I think they're they're probably just wanting to get Carter again. Nothing there. A yard, if that, to the 36. And Lewis is going to get a chance to put his first one up right here, I would think, as Solomon Bates again makes the stop, and we have less than two minutes to play in a wild third quarter that has seen four more scores. I think they want to get Chris Lewis some playing time. I think they've, they've done this pretty much every game. They just try to throw him in there and get him a little playing time, just change the pace as part of the game plan, what, they, what Stanford really likes to do. Stanford is a 40% third down team, four of 10. Two wide receivers to the right of Lewis to throw his first one, does deep, and over the head of Powell, incomplete. Well, this is an interesting call now for Tyrone Willingham here, uh, Stoney, because you can either go for it here and run the risk of turning the ball over to Arizona State, or you can punt and try to pin them back deep. But the way special teams have been playing here tonight, you might get one run back on you. I think they're going to play safe and try to punt it away, pin them inside the 10-yard line. McDonald stands inside the 10. Johnson has not punted in the second half, if memory serves me correctly. Doesn't get much air under it. McDonald drops oh. it. Oh, my. 
but I believe he got it back. Cron with the ball at his 17 and a minute and eight seconds to play in the third. Back to throw. Going deep again in the middle. That ball is picked off, and Stanford gets it right back. Give that one to Tank Williams. That's and just like throw. that, Arizona State turns it over. Tank Williams' fifth career interception, Stoney. Tank Williams is a, good, is a really good player. He's going to be one of the top safeties this year in the draft. That's one of those plays that, you know, it's late in the game. You know you're down. You're just trying to make something happen, and you just force a turnover. Sometimes uh, you just try to make a little bit more out of something. That's, that's definitely a mismatch, tied in against, straight, uh, against the safety like Tank Williams. Williams did a nice job getting up in the air on that ball, too. That ball wasn't that poorly thrown, but Williams was very, very close to the receiver. So, Fasani comes back in after Lewis gets his three snaps, and he has it first and 10 at the Arizona State 47. Blitz coming. Here goes Allen trying to get around the corner. 30, 20, 10, 5. He scores. what, ASU's not doing a good job of containing on those bounces with, by the running backs. And they keep running toward Terrell Suggs' side. He got, he got pinned in a little bit by the left tackle. Running back was able to bounce around him and go in for the touchdown. There's nobody else out there. Got a chance to see Brian Allen. I tell you, once he gets over on that sideline, it's like magic. When he turns up field, it's over. Well, he did a really good job of uh, pressing the hole. He, you know, he wanted to go inside if he could. He pressed the hole. That, that brought Terrell Suggs in, and then he bounced it around him. It's a mark of a good running back when you can press the hole until the last second and then pop around. Brian Allen, that is not his longest run from scrimmage, by the way. His longest is 71 yards coming last year. But one person gets a hand on him at the 10-yard line. And that was it. Wow. I thought we were going to see some points put up, but I didn't think we were going to see 79 points scored in one football game before the end of the third quarter. It's a shootout. These are fun games to play in, as long as you're on the winning side yeah, of that. Yeah, I bet. It gets a little frustrating if you're putting up Putting up 28 points on offense after three quarters and, and you're still down, you know, 23. Tonight is Baselli. And he drives that one all the way to the goal line. Williams comes out of the end zone with it. 20, 25 to the 30 and the 35 and finally wrestled down at the 36 by Simba Hodari. It's a really tough position for a quarterback to be in. Cron gets smoked as he throws that one. That's what I'm talking about wow. right there. I tell you what, now Trey Freeman put a hit on Cron that he'll remember for a couple of weeks. And Tank Williams was a heartbeat away from an interception and six more points. Look at this hit. This one will rattle your chain. Ooh. Second down and 10. Travis Scott just flat missed his uh, the defensive tackle. Three wides to the right, and Cron's going to hand it off to Delvon Flowers and say, here, you let him hit you for a minute. <laughs> That'll probably be the last play of the third quarter. Cron comes to the sideline. Well, he's hustling back to the huddle, so and it's not going to do you any good to let the clock run out. You need to take one more snap here if you can. Now Cutter's down there telling him to hurry up and get another play around before the third quarter ends. So the ball's on the 39, and it's third down and seven. And they do. They get it off before the third period comes to an end. Cron in trouble again, has to throw it away. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. So Stanford has pinned 51 big ones up on the scoreboard in three periods of play. They lead the Arizona State Sun Devils 51-28 at the end of three. All right, we got 15 minutes to play here at Stanford. The third period, by the way, ended on a penalty. Arizona State was called for an illegal shift. Stanford declined the penalty because the play resulted in 
Arizona State starting the fourth quarter with a fourth down. And you see the two head coaches, Tyrone Willingham, trying to get a jump start on the conference race. Dirk Cutter is about to go 0-1 or trying to avoid going 0-1 in the conference. And you look at these numbers. Fasani has tied his career high, which he set two weeks ago with four touchdowns. Stanford has scored as well in the second half as they did in the first, and now starting to gain control of the time of possession. And we're not that far away from a 1,000-yard game here, Stoney Case. He's had back-to-back -back career high touchdown passes, yep. four in the first game, four in this one. Luke Powell awaits the punt from Nick Murphy, Murphy, I should say, as we start the fourth quarter. The line of scrimmage is the Arizona State 39. Nice high one. Powell, a fair catch at the 21. Here comes a flag. Didn't Arizona State room. got in the halo there. So Lewis comes back out to start the fourth quarter, and Brian Allen with 129 yards rushing, including that touchdown run of 47 yards, has set a career best for himself. And Kerry Carter will be the running back as we start the fourth period. And ASU still tough to run against inside. Yeah, Stanford's really, Stanford's really had the most success faking it up inside where the running back actually presses the hole and bounces around the, the corner. And, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, Arizona State's just not doing a good job. Their linebackers aren't flowing to the outside. I guess they're getting caught up in the middle. And really, the, the run defense up front in the middle has been great tonight. It appears that... Uh, when Stanford has been the most effective, it looks like Arizona State is blitzing on what they anticipate to be a passing play. And as you say, Stoney, they're, they're blitzing inside. And then Stanford runs to the outside. Lewis throws it. Was he across the line of scrimmage when he did? No. And the pass for Wells knocked away by Ricardo Stewart in front of the Arizona State bench. And it's incomplete. It just seems like once those backs get outside, there's nobody out there to chase them. And, and the... Uh, the people that are coming with the blitz are coming from the to the inside of the tackles, and then they get caught up in the in all the uh, humanity in there and can't get to the ball carrier. Well, it's definitely a chess match out there. And Coach Cutter earlier in the week told me that uh, that Stanford likes to kind of try to figure out and do what attack whatever you're trying to do, and they've been really good tonight about if if Arizona State's blitzing from the outside, having a having a run or or a, or a play action around trying to run away from the blitz and then you know at times when when Arizona State's blitzing up the middle they've been able to bounce the ball out out wide so you know either way Stanford's winning and Arizona State's losing right now. Terrell Suggs knocking Carter down for a loss of about five yards back at the 21 and here comes Eric Johnson back into punt and uh, McDonald who dropped the last punt stands back at his 45 yard line to field this one. Clock is running with 13 and change left to play here in the football game. Stanford trying to run as much time off the clock as they can. Arizona State puts the pressure on. Not a real good looking punt. McDonald fields it and Fair catches it at his own 47. How about that? 51 points tonight. And we still got a long way to go. Highest point total against Arizona State in a long time. Cron near side for Taplin. Double team that time. Tank Williams is back there along with Brian Taylor to break it up. That time you see Tank Williams covering a lot of ground from, he was near the hash, ran all the way over the top to, to break up that pass. It's good coverage all the way around. There's no chance. Tank Williams is a football player. I like the way he plays. Tough guy. Second and 10. So is Cron. He's tough. And right down the middle there for McDonald and a first down for Arizona State at the Stanford 25. Lee Torrance, who is about number three on the depth chart at the cornerback position for Stanford, is down to make the tackle and move those chains in big chunks of yardage. And that ought to get us right around 1,000 yards right now. And Arizona State's got it at the Stanford 26, first and 10. That time Stanford just in the soft zone coverage, able to run the receiver right down the middle. Cron again to put it up. Screen pass. 
And not much there after the catch is made, but penalty flags are down after the play is over. I think he caught the ball past the line of scrimmage. And on a screen pass, he's not able to do that. Ineligible downfield. Cron now 16 of 34 for 358 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception tonight. On a screen pass, you can throw the ball downfield as long as the offensive linemen are not past the line of scrimmage. I guess that's a rip. Nelson receiver downfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot, still first down. When you're going to throw that screen pass, you got to get rid of it before those linemen move three yards downfield, right? Exactly. The running back took way too long to get out. Then, he, then he's actually covered by a defensive lineman right there. See number 70 right there down, down the field. That was Re Regis Crawford just wasn't patient enough. If a tight end makes that play, it's offensive pass interference. First and 15, Cron throws again, right through the hands of O'Neill. And it's second down. 39,580 here at Stanford Stadium tonight, and a few of them have decided to go battle the traffic or whatever. This one has taken a while to play with this many points and that many passes thrown. Think the charter will get us home before sunup? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's supposed to be a late one. Arizona State plays San Jose State next Saturday night at Sun Devil Stadium. We'll have that telecast for you. That close to another interception. Sean Tank McDonald Williams did a great and job Ryan there. Fernandez get together, and then McDonald breaks it up. As a quarterback, you love a receiver to do that. When you when you throw a ball up, trying to make a play, and you trust in your receiver to break up an interception, he did a great job. Tink Williams had it. Sean McDonald puts one in the ribs, gives gives it back to the defense the way he usually takes them. We've seen a couple of times tonight where the intended receiver has done an excellent job of preventing an interception. That was one of them right there. Taplin to the left, O'Neal to the left. It's his third down and 15. Cron over the middle, catch is made by Denard, well short of the first down at the 23. Toyota, Arizona State on a fourth down call. Cron going far side and over the head of McDonald. And uh, Cron is deposited on his backside once again, this time by Austin Lee. Stanford takes over. It's a fourth down play. You just got to throw it up. And uh, he just needed a little bit more time. He had a receiver that was actually going to come open on a deep comeback. And, just didn't have time to time to get get the receiver through his last couple of steps. Caused him to throw it high. A lot of times you'll see a quarterback that's rushed throw it throw the ball high. So Chris Lewis will lead the Cardinal back out there. And Brian Allen, by golly, he's still staying in the ball game. Get a few more to add to that career best that he has so far tonight. And Stanford hoping they can he can get a few and they can run some time off the clock. Allen picks up five right there before getting socked in the jaw as he crosses the 25. Willie Daniel is still delivering a blow out there, and neither one of these teams is pulling its number one guys off the field yet. Of course, it's early in the season. You want to give them a little experience. It is. It's been it's been two weeks since the last game. These guys, uh, you know, need need to. Need to play a little longer because, you know, you lose a little game shape when you miss a week. Nick Sebus is the wide receiver to the right. He's caught a touchdown pass tonight. They're going to him. He's got it. First down yardage and to the 41. And that's the first pass that he has caught at Stanford that wasn't a touchdown. <laughs> I think another good point is usually, uh, you know, after your first game, there, there's a lot, a lot of improvement to be made from your first to second, second game. Because of the unfortunate circumstances that happened with a lot of teams, they, they missed their second game. There was, there was a long lull period. I think you're going to see a lot of teams improve a lot from your, their second to the third game as opposed to first to second. Yeah, this one is an awful lot like another first game when you've taken that much time off, particularly when your practice regimen has been disrupted like it was. Justin Faust gets his first carry of the night for Stanford. And... He makes it a productive one, a four-yard carry to the 45. Mason Unk on the tackle for Arizona State. Faust is a junior 
out of Arlington, Texas. Two carries for 13 yards in the opening game of the season against Boston College. And now Stanford is starting to make a few substitutions at the skill position. So although a lot of these guys have been playing a good portion of the ball game. Sebus again, out of bounds on the 45. That's Adrian Thomas. I think they're trying to get him a little work at the cornerback position. He's just a sophomore. Hasn't played a whole lot. Tell you what, Lewis has looked pretty sharp here on this. Again, that running game just opens things up for the quarterback, and then it gives him a couple, another second to throw it, and that's all it takes. Caleb Bowman, the wide receiver to the right, Sebas to the right, Stanford with a first down at the Arizona State 44. Lewis is now two out of four for 25 yards in relief of Randy Fasani. Nothing there that time for Faust. And he loses a yard back to the 45. And it's nice to hear all the way up here, you hear the plastic hitting down there. So ASU is still delivering a blow on defense. Well, I don't think they're going to ever going to ever going to give up. But their defense definitely hasn't played that well tonight. I think they're going to have to work on that this week. I, I really like their offense, though. Their offense has done some some really good things, and I think if the the score would have been a little bit closer, you'd have seen even even more. Lewis, Sebus. That was a great play right there, and a good open field play right there by Lamar Baker. And Stanford has taken two snaps since getting the first down inside the Arizona State 45, Stoney, and they've gone backwards twice. It's a quick sprint out, quick flat by Sebus, and Baker makes a, makes a good open field tackle. Yeah, that's a textbook tackle. Let's get your head down, get your face mask on the numbers, and then get your arms around them and pull them down on the ground. Third and 12. The good news for Stanford is the clock keeps running. Audibleizing. Wow, another good hit. Adrian As Bowman Thomas. makes his first catch. Adrian Thomas makes the tackle. That's Bowman's first catch. Out of Sandpoint, Idaho, a senior. Fourth down, Stanford's not going to go for it here. They're going to punt it and give it back. Probably the smart decision. Just under eight minutes to play in the ball game. McDonald wisely runs out from underneath it, and Stanford's going to cover it inside the five. That looked like Stony Case's sand wedge right there, didn't it? <laughs> Jeff Cron will take the rest of the evening off. Matt Cooper will relieve him at quarterback now as the Sun Devils go to work first and 98 at their own two. Cooper from the end zone, looking for a little running room now. And he'll sprint out of bounds at the 15 and get the Sun Devils a first down. It's a good scramble. He's not really known for his scrambling ability, but he did a good job. Good job getting out of the pocket. Makes you nervous being in your own end zone, especially he's seven or eight yards deep. Cooper with a touchdown and an interception and 169 yards passing last year. That is out of Pleasanton, 6'5", 233-pound fourth-year junior. He and Cron started the preseason with a question mark next to each one of their names as to which one was going to start. And Cron won the job after about two weeks of training camp. Cooper goes short. Carney makes the catch. And Tank Williams knocks him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Yeah, Coach Cutter opened up the quarterback the quarterback job to, to whoever wanted to take it. And, you know, after a few weeks, Cron was learning the offense a little bit better, felt a little more confident with him in there, and uh, decided to make him the starter. 
Second and ten. Lightfoot and Denard are the two wide receivers to the right of Cooper. This is Lightfoot with the catch inside the 20. Look at the moves this guy's got. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, but it didn't do much. He does four, have some quick feet now. Four players have thrown a pass tonight, just in case you're interested now for Arizona State. Who was the fourth one? You got the three quarterbacks and the punter. That's right. <laughs> on the fake punt. That was a great play. Third and ten. Boy, our stat guy's right on it. I mean, we got he's got a pile of post-it notes over here with stuff that he's been writing down. I forgot about that's the Hail a, Mary. That's a, that's a great, uh, and, the, and of course the Hail Mary, yeah, by Andrew Walter. This one's overthrown by about five yards, and Arizona State's going to give it up on a fourth down play here now with six minutes left to play in the ball game. Yeah, Jeff Cron won that job, but I think uh, another thing that helped him was just his experience from last year. You know, mm -hmm. he got to start a lot of games, got a lot of, you know, a lot of confidence uh, by, by playing so much. He was just a walk-on. He's a young guy. But he was able to come in and play, have some success. He threw 12 touchdown passes and only six interceptions. And I mean, those, that's pretty. Those are pretty good. That's a pretty good ratio right there in itself. Yeah, Arizona State went to through three quarterbacks last year: Keeley, and then Griff Goodman, and uh, and Cooper. And and Cooper and Cron both got equal time at Camp Tonazona this year, and then Cron started getting a little bit more and a little bit more as the preseason progressed. And look at this. SC with a one-point lead over Oregon in the fourth quarter. And we're down to the Hey Hughes now on the Stanford roster. Ken Tolan, who is their number four running back, is out there this time to carry the ball for about three yards out across the 40 to the 43, and the clock keeps running for the Cardinal with 524 left to play. You know, this is a really tough situation when you're down 51 to 28. You know, what do you do? Well, I think uh, you put a lot of your young guys in, give them some experience. You know, regardless of what the score is, if you're, if you're a guy that doesn't play, you want to get out there and you want to play hard and you're looking forward to it. Tolan again, trying to get around the corner and ridden out of bounds in front of the Stanford bench. Jason Shivers makes the tackle. Tolan is from your old stomping grounds. He played high school ball at Valley High in Albuquerque. Stoney played collegiately at the University of New Mexico after Permian High School, the old mojo spot in Texas. In you know about school. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I was in El Paso. Permian used to come up and beat Coronado all the time. They were our first game. An El Paso team was usually our first game of the season and our first playoff game. And you listen to the voice of experience here. The, the, the Permian Panthers always went to a playoff game in Texas high school football. Lewis completes a pass, but short of the first down in front of the Arizona State bench to Greg Camarillo. Lewis pass is complete to number 23, Greg Camarillo. And it'll bring up a fourth down for Stanford. And Camarillo stayed in bounds, so the clock continues to run. Wow. Good hit on the quarterback. It's track meet out there. Yes, it is. Over a thousand. In the WAC, we had games like this every week. I was used to this. <laughs> games last all night, right? All night. Johnson's going to punt, but not before. We get a delay a game against Stanford. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So he gets another five yards to try to kill one again inside the 20. Following the penalty, the ball is placed on the 43 yard line, fourth down and six. Johnson had two kills inside the 20 two weeks ago. He has punted tonight seven times for an average of 37 yards. Wobbles this one away from McDonald. Backs it up again, and it'll be touched out past the 25. And that's where Arizona State will go to work with exactly four minutes left to play in the football game. What do you mean? 
I mean, as far as the speed of the game, and you know, obviously there's more intensity and everything, but is it difficult when you're in a ball game that's that one-sided, even when you get out there to concentrate and play? Well, I think there's three different levels. I think there's practice tempo. I think there's game time tempo. And then I think there's a game out of hand tempo. And it's kind of right in the middle of both. And, you know, the defense is very soft. So actually, you know, the, the de usually the defensive line is a little more tired. But at the same time, you, you can throw, you can complete a lot of passes underneath as a quarterback, you know, coming in if you're getting blown out because the, the, just for instance here, it's a three deep, real soft zone coverage. No, nobody's making a play on the ball. They're just trying to, trying to, you know, bend but not break. Mm -hmm. Skyler Fulton pulls in a pass from Matt Cooper and gets the Sun Devils a first down at their own 46. And the Devils now going without a huddle. They want to get some more points on the board and have a little bit of success and a good taste in their mouth when they leave here after surrendering. 51 points to Stanford's Cardinal, and they're going to put eight seconds back on the clock here. I think coaches look at look at these games this, kind of the same way too. They they still want their guys out there playing hard, not giving up, and really gives them opportunity. For instance, right here, running a no huddle offense, which you don't get a lot of opportunity to do. Cooper, sideline, nice catch over here by Lightfoot, out of bounds, right at the stick. And you get a guy like Daryl Lightfoot, who's only a true freshman, get him, get him a chance to get in there, make some plays, do some good things, get the butterflies out for the for the time when it when it's a big big time game and it's a tight game and you got to make it play. Cooper comes into the ball game or comes back to the to the huddle, I should say, from the sideline, and Arizona State did in fact pick up a first down on that play, which. Also stopped the clock because they went out of bounds. Delvon Flowers finds the going very tough up the middle. And there you see Coy Wire. We uh, talked about him. He's one of the few guys in college football to lead a team in rushing one season and lead a team in tackles another. Came here as a running back. Became a linebacker, 12 tackles tonight. He's well on his way to being a team leader in tackles again. Definitely. He's a great player. He runs all over the field, very athletic. Cooper throws that one over the head of Lightfoot and out of bounds. You know, a lot of colleges are playing those, uh, those lighter uh, inside linebackers that just can run and make plays. I know ASU's, ASU's been known to do that, and a lot of, a lot of teams around the, the country do that. They, they play the undersized guys just because they're fast. They, they play hard, the hard nose. And in the NFL, you know, you can't play undersized at linebacker. You're just going to get beat up. So that's why a lot of these guys uh, are, are making the move to safety, and he's going to be one of those guys that makes it pretty easily, I think. Well, we've seen two guys out of Arizona State that have been able to do that, Pat Tillman and Adam Archuleta. Cooper airs that one out, and that one's intercepted. Justin McCollum. To the 24. And so the Cardinal will take over. At the 25, Stanford at work now, first and 10. Faust gets five. Arizona State with three turnovers. One of them, Stoney, as we looked at the First half highlights was a huge turnover. ASU had a chance to take the early lead. Carney on a re the receiving end of a pass, dropped the ball as he st started to cross the goal line. The other two turnovers have come after Stanford had built a big lead. Yeah, Arizona State's had three turnovers, but only really one of them's cost them cost them a lot because the, the other two came after the game was out of hand. Second and five, Stanford. About a minute and a half to play. Here goes Faust again, struggling for first down yardage, and I think he got it. And now Stanford can run the clock out. Take a knee a couple of times if they want to. ASU's got two timeouts left, but I think if Stanford goes to the formation where the quarterback takes a knee, I doubt Arizona State's going to stop the clock twice more. So this one should just about be done. They have three turnovers, but, you know, really what counts just as bad as a, a, a 
you know, a turnover is that roughing the punter call. Yeah. It cost him just as much as any of those turnovers. Well, Stanford is not going to go to the take a knee formation here. Give their backs a chance to carry a couple more. In anger, Tolan carries it there. Less than a minute to go. And you see the looks on the faces of the Sun Devils and the looks of the faces of people like Randy Fasani on the Stanford sideline is they've gone 2-0, and and more importantly, they're 1-0 and in the Pac-10. And this one should be the final play of the ball game. You've got to hand it to Arizona State. As you see Jimmy Verdon coming across the line of scrimmage and knocking Tolan down right there on a good field, open field tackle. And that one will be the final play of the ball game. Stanford with a 51 to 28 victory over Arizona State. You see the two head coaches meeting at the middle of the field. Tyrone Willingham has now won four of the seven games he's coached against Arizona State. And the Sun Devils now will regroup, go home with a couple of non-conference games before they have to go out and play another conference game against USC. So uh, a good effort by Stanford tonight, no, no kidding. They're a good football team and they're gonna surprise a lot of people this year.